All right. Good morning, everybody. Good evening. Good afternoon. Can everyone hear me just fine? Yeah. No. No wine today. Just Coke. Coke. I don't know where my camera is. Okay. Excellent. 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 Okay. So we got two hundred people in the room and counting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just Coke. Excellent, excellent. Let's give it another minute and uh, let's get started. Let's get started here. Okay, let me get up a poll for you guys. Uh, I want to see something here. Okay. I've set up a poll, let me know if this is your first time here or you've been here before. First time live for me, Powell, okay. Okay, okay. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So we got uh, pretty much half the room and is veterans. They've been here before. And uh, we got a quite, a quite a bit of you guys who are new here, who are here for the very first time. So, uh, welcome, welcome. So, let's get started. Let's get this party started. Let's do this. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so just to begin, uh, my name is Naveen Prithiani from urbanforex.com. I will be your host today going over mastering trend lines. Mastering trend lines. Now, before we begin, just wanted to get to know everybody. Where is everybody from? What countries are you here from? Let's see, we got 225 people in here and counting. Okay, we got Canada, Singapore, Turkey, Latvia, India, Brunei, Costa Rica, Bangladesh, Thailand, Bahrain, Singapore, Azerbaijan. I'm trying to find one that hasn't been here before. Baltimore, Maryland, London, Mexico. Uh, <laughs> I can't read. Holland. Okay, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. So we got we got people from all around the world. So one before we begin, I wanted to thank you guys for being here because I know for some of you guys being in the different parts of the world, this is very very early in the morning. For some people, it's very very late in the night. For people in the U.S., maybe you guys are not morning person, so you guys are just waking up. Uh, people in London, uh, maybe you guys are skipping lunch or you know use, watching here during your lunch. So thank you all for being here. So. Some people skip work. Oh, well, it, even more, more reasons for me to thank you guys for being here. So let's make sure we, we make this a two-way street. You guys sacrifice to be here, and I'm going to give you guys information in return. Okay? This is not your typical webinar. For those of you who are here for the first time, it's not your typical webinar where we go just sit here and talk stories and all that stuff for a good hour long, and then I give you something really important for like two minutes. No. We're gonna go important stuff, 50 minutes of the webinar, 10 minutes is just you got you guys and me talking, or we're, we're interacting between what, what, what would you do here, what would you do there, so. Yes, this is being recorded. In fact, I'm going to start the recording here as well, just to be safe, because last time we were messed up with recording, and those, you know, thank you for some of uh, the members who reached out to us saying, oh, we have the recording, here you go, Naveen, so thanks a lot for all of that. Um, so, you guys ready to begin? Shall we get started? All right, all right, let's do this. Let's do this. So, trend lines. What do you guys know about trend lines? Okay, Are you guys able to see my screen? Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, let me open up a single chart for now, and then we'll go into uh, details in a bit. Okay, here we go. Let me clear up the charts. Okay, then let's go to what, what pair do you guys like? Euro USD, pound New Zealand, pound USD. What do you guys like? What's the thing you guys love to trade? Euro. Okay, Euro USD seems to be coming up quite a bit. Okay, let's open up uh, Euro USD and then we'll make our way to the other ones. Okay, so I'm gonna take a screenshot so you guys can see where I'm drawing. Okay, you guys all see the screen here? 
Uh, in fact, let me let me zoom in a bit more for those of you who might have problems seeing this. Okay, I'm gonna take a screenshot now. Okay, is that better? Can you guys? I'm gonna draw a circle. Let me know when you see it. Yeah. Okay. Looks like the circle is coming through. Okay. So now trend lines is a unique phenomenon to our industry. Okay. It's a, it's a very unique way to do things. And, you know, as you guys probably saw my video before coming to this webinar, people, you know, draw trend lines, like they're just connecting dots, you know, in preschool, like, you know, oh, look at that little circle there, a circle there, a circle there, you know, let me just keep drawing them, you know, just connect them, connect them, connect them. And then since we just did this nice preschool drawing, let me put my whole house on it and say, I'm going to sell it there. No, no. What are you doing? You know, this is, this is not the way to do trend lines. <laughs> So let's step up the game a little bit. Let's find out what trend lines are, what, when are they important, how do we draw them, and let's master it, right? That's what we're here for. So let's go into that. Let's go into that. So Euro USD, we're out here on a daily chart. Now, when, when you see a normal support equals resistance, right? Let's say the market's coming down, it pulls back, it goes down again. Would we say this area is a support equals resistance? Okay, so for support equals resistance, for the average individual, the eye sees two things. There's a stop, or three things actually. There's a break, okay, and then there's a resume. Yeah, for most people, that's what support equals resistance mean. I'm going to go into true support equals resistance because there is a difference between a normal support resistance like for example some people might draw let me see if i can find it this thing here they'll say that is support equals resistance when it's not okay so we'll, we'll go into stuff like that and we'll explain why certain things are and certain things are not support resistance okay because that plays a very big role into trend lines as well okay so Support resistance and trend lines are basically the same thing. Only difference is trend lines is that tilted sister or brother of the support resistance, okay? It's that abnormal person who's a little bit, you know, he wants to be different. That unique person with baggy pants, okay? So support resistance and trend lines are the same thing. So let's go into the first thing here. We see the markets are coming down here. They're going down, 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 down. Now, am I supposed to count, to to uh, draw my trend lines like this? Am I supposed to draw my trend lines like that? Am I supposed to draw my trend line like that? Three theories. Theory number one, theory number two, theory number three. Now, if any of those theories are incorrect, the answer is wrong. Right? It's as simple as that. Correct? Theory number three shows an uptrend. Theory number two shows a, a downtrend, but slow downtrend. Theory number one shows, you know, things are going to hell. We're all, we're all dying. You know, it's like massive collapse in the market. Okay? It's just like, okay, the euro is collapsing. Now, we want to understand the different theories. So there is different ranges of how people draw their support equals resistance or draw their trend line. So let's go into a little bit more detail. Now, as the market's coming down, we see a pause here in the market and then they resume down. So I want you to focus on this red candle as it starts to go down. It's going down, down, down. I'm going to draw the line like that. And then it pulls back for one green bar. I'm going to pull that up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that bar and this bar and I'm going to extract it to the right side. Now I want you guys to just tell me how much of a retracement is that? Okay. 20%, 30%. So if I was to give you a concept of a car driving at full speed and then there's a speed bump, that does damage to a car and the car does this would you say that speed bump is important yes okay it is important because 
it can stop this entire force. It's not about how much, it's also about how much, how much did it stop it, but it's the, the concept of how fast is the force coming in and who in their right minds can stop it, okay? So if the force is coming in at full speed and something stops it, that means two things are happening. One, either our big boy, he slows down because he's afraid of the speed bump, or the speed bump just took him out, okay? This means if our big boy is afraid of this price, so should we be. Does that make sense, the logic? And I'm, I'm gonna give you a separate example now, okay? I'm gonna give you a separate example. If that same car is coming at full capacity, oh, 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 sorry. I didn't mean to do that, okay. Yeah, same car is coming at full capacity, and then it does this. One green little candle. Yes, you can draw it like it's support equals resistance, but is that speed bump did it scare our big boy? Did it do anything to our big boy? No. Hence, we ignore this. We don't want to put our attention here because it has no value. Okay, according to design, the line is supposed to go here, according to visual design, but there is no logic behind the visual design. Does that make sense? You have to have that logic behind the visual design, otherwise all we're doing is pattern trading and we might as well trade with robots and we all know robots don't perform so well because the broker did it, right? It's the wonderful way of always blaming the broker. So it's, it's what we're gonna do is we're gonna step it up a little bit more. We're gonna take it to the next stage. Okay, so Market's coming down full force here. Does everyone see this full force coming in? Okay. He's coming down, coming down, coming down, and a little green bar shows up here. Would you say that's true support equals resistance? No. And I want you guys to remember this. Don't just draw it because there's a green candle there and then there's a stop break and resume saying that, oh, that's a support equals resistance because it broke below and it went further. No, a true support equals resistance is what did that price do? What did this price do to the overall guy who's been coming? So this overall guy, if I extract him out and I put him on the side so you guys can see it better, how much of a stop did that green candle do to that big flow coming down? Yeah, 5%, you know, 7%, something like that, right? Very, very small. Hence, if our big boy is not offended by this, we should not be also. There is no mouse cursor, I'm drawing it live. Okay, I will always draw when I'm speaking, don't worry. So you won't have to see the cursor. Okay, does that make sense, everyone with me so far? Okay, but further down the line, the market comes to this area and it reacts. And it reacts. Once the price comes down, he responds. Now, is that response important? Yeah. Now this becomes true support equals resistance. Now there's a difference between this one. Okay. Now notice true support support resistance plays its role in the future as well. Okay. Everything I'm going to teach you now is going to get tougher and tougher and tougher. So just hang in with me, take notes if you have to, and participate as much as you can because you'll learn faster. Okay. So remember the first time we said that this support equals resistance didn't do anything, correct? And then the price went lower. The price went lower to here, but then he shot right back up to there. If I can take this first line and just drag it straight through, would you say 
price ever came down at all? Or was that a fake? Faker. What happens now is you can now involve this entire area and saying this is true support equals resistance. Because the fact that he let the driver go further, but the driver is like, you know what, screw this. This is too dangerous. This makes this area even more interesting to us. It's like, oh, okay, I like this. That's real. Okay, so let me show you show you something here. Okay, does everyone see this resistance here? How the price didn't go higher than this price? Does everyone see this? Okay, does everyone see the resistance here? So what is this extra piece that came out? Is that real or is that fake? Let me show you something here. Just keep that in mind. I'm gonna go to a higher time frame. I'm gonna draw that line there. Boom, like that. I'm gonna go to the weekly. Oh, where is that green body? A green and red body, where is it? Do you see that thing at all? It's not there. It's just a spike. It never happened. It was fake. Is things starting to make sense? How there is fake situations in the market? Okay, now. I'm going to give you the same example one more time just to test you guys. Ready? Here we go. Sellers coming in. Very hard. Correct? Sellers are coming in hard and then this little green little candle stops the market. Would we say that's true support equals resistance? No. But then later on, prices went lower, but then they came right back up. It's as if that extra low never happened. Now would we say this is true support equals resistance? Ah, look at that price. Why is that price responding right from that area? It's because that price is very important to our big boy. If it's important to him, it's important to us. Okay, or we can say if it's important to her, it's important to us too. Let's not be sexist here. Okay, so makes sense so far? Okay, now let's use the same logic for the understanding of trend lines. Now, if I draw my trend line, let's say just for example, from here to here, okay, that looks like, you know, just support. That's one way. I can draw my trend line from here to there and I can skip this because it's not real. Notice how this price gets respected a lot more times than if I was to draw it including this piece. Interesting, isn't it? I can, I can see all of you guys with their whiskey glasses sitting there like, mm-hmm, go on, let's see what more you got going. <laughs> it's not a magic show, okay? So I'm just trying to explain to you guys that there is more to it that is just not shown in the industry so much. So, all right, so let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right, so same concept. Sellers coming in here, hot. They're coming in hot. Would we say this is true support equals resistance? Yes, very good. I can see the majority has switched directions. Very good. Because it responds to the market hard. And hence, later on, we can see that that area will get respected. Okay, let's go back to our normal chart so we can see more examples. I mean, let me go down to the one hour, let's say. Let's go down to the one hour. Let's go take a screenshot here. Okay, now. Before I continue here, I'm gonna ask one simple question. You ready? 
How many of you guys are looking at this right now and can't focus? <laughs> okay, let's be honest here now. So <laughs> avoid looking at that area. This is a common mistake a lot of my students do. They're like, they're trying to focus, but they keep seeing that big green last candle. Like, can I buy that? <laughs> like, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to remove this for you guys. So you guys can pay attention and focus. Okay. All right. So moving forward, moving forward. Let's see this. Markets are rising very, very hard from here. Okay, markets are rising very hard from here. Would we say this is support equals resistance right there? No. Now, once we understand the concept of support equals resistance, we can take it a next step further and say, okay, this is how uh, trend lines are drawn. But first we need to understand the logic, the concept of it. So this is not support equals resistance. That means those of you who are doing the rubber band man theory, this is not his first stop and rest. His first stop is up here. Okay, yeah, everything's recorded, don't worry. Um, okay, so if I were to do this, markets are going up and then they pull back and then they go up again and then they pull back here. What kind, how much pullback does this look like now? 50%, 60%, right? So that means like, whoa, first time he pulled back was 5%. The next time, 60%. Oh, the markets are dying. Wrong information brings out wrong analysis. But if I was to say this whole thing is not a stop, but in fact, it's all one piece till here, and then that's the pullback, well, how much percentage of a pullback is it now? You see how the data can change? If you misread it, the whole analysis becomes wrong and anything you do going forward for trading becomes wrong. If you do not know it, how to do it the right way, even though you're trying to execute the trade the right way, it won't work because the information leading up to it is not accurate. Okay. All right. Moving forward, moving forward. So we get up to from from here the markets are flying all the way up to here and then we got this pullback here would we say that's the support equals resistance okay this one will have a little bit more validity to it okay so let's take a look at it further what he does next what does he do next can he make a higher high No. What does he do after that? He gets knocked back down. It's the series of who's knocking it down with a hammer and who has the balls to challenge this guy. Okay? You need a lot of money to face the guy with this kind of money, right? Right? You got to you got to remember that. You need a lot of money to challenge a guy with that kind of money. So if that's if that saying is true, then whoever's up here is a threat to our buyer. If he's a threat to our buyer, we want to keep that in mind. That becomes our true support equals resistance. Okay, so once that's our true support equals resistance, we're going to keep that in mind and we're going to say, okay, every time he gets up to this price, sellers keep knocking it down. Keep knocking it down. Keep knocking it down. But what's the what's the uh, what's the percentage of pullbacks from this guy? How many times do they keep trying? Okay, they try many, 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 many times. They keep selling. They keep selling. They keep selling. But are they able to turn the market around? No, which means every time they try, they're depleting money. They're depleting their cash. And sooner or later, the big boy is like, okay, well, thank you very much. I'm going to take it for a buy. As long as people are willing to sell to me, I'll take it for a buy. Okay. So this concept of buyers and sellers and understanding true support equals resistance is pretty much 
a critical standing piece in the market. It's very, very important. Okay, now going back to trend lines. Okay, is this a trend line? We're getting some mixed answers here. Let me show you something here. When prices came down, they reached this low. From this low, the markets went lower, but never stayed lower. This is a flat line. Okay, this is a flat line, it's, it's support. So this area does not exist if it does not exist well, why do I give it importance with my trend line? Cool. So moving it forward. Now, if I use this bottom price, if I use this bottom price here, should I use the bottom price here? Now, this time I use my tails, right? To say that's my bottom price. But what about the tails here? Can I use that tail? No. See, this is how you understand when to use a tail and when not to. To see, is it real or is it not? Okay. Would you say this bottom is real? Excuse me. Would you say that bottom is real or fake? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this area because if that's my support equals resistance, so this is support resistance number two, example. This is support equals resistance number one. I'm gonna draw it right now, sorry about that. Okay, this is number one right here. Is two higher than one? That takes a trend line. That takes a trend line, which means we're gonna connect it from here to there. Now this time, here, I'm involving the bodies, but here, I'm even going through the bodies. I'm playing Fruit Ninja with this. You see that? I'm, I'm actually cutting through candles here because this bottom does not exist. Does that make sense? It's like if I went to a higher time frame, would there be candles here or would there just be a tail? Just a tail. If it's just a tail, I'm not cutting through anything. I'm just connecting my dots, my constellation. Now, if price comes back down lower, you know to start looking at stuff around here. But if I were to drive from my lowest point to my lowest point, you might be waiting for a trade down here and the trade might not even get there. Make sense? Let's do the same thing for the top. So the same thing for the top. So if I was to ask you guys, what kind of trade is this? Is this a trend pullback happening right now or are we in a range? It's a range. Since this highest point here, the markets never made a high, never made a high, never made a high fake 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 never made a high never made a high since this low the markets never made a low never made a low never made a low we're dealing with something that looks like this but with the idea of it slowly inching upwards as well okay this extra information is very powerful, knowing that it's slightly inching upwards. Yeah, it's an upward bias. You know that the dollar has weakness across the board or euro has strength. In this particular case, even though you're, you see it's a range, range means sell from the top, buy from the bottom, you're gonna favor more buy from the bottom condition.
Yeah. So if you if you if you were to buy it now, it would still be okay in my opinion. I'm not saying everyone open your you know trade platform and hit the buy. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you were to look at this whole situation, you can still you know pull out buys from this. Okay. So if we take a look at, uh, let me move this out. Okay, how many of you guys here are in my Mastering Price Section course? MPA students here. How many MPA students here? Okay. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Fantastic. How many elite members are here? Say elite. How many elite students are here? Okay. All right, we got some elites in there. Oh, Holger, welcome. Okay, so we got some elites in there as well. Okay, so if we were to look at this as this is an uptrend, in an uptrend, we want sellers to come in. And if we're looking at this as sellers, as the rubber band man style going through it, can I count this as a support equals resistance? What I'm saying, is this a sell 50% pullback or does the sell begin from, oh, sorry. Or does the sell begin from only here and that's 80% pullback? Okay, yeah. The, sec the second one looks more, more promising. So when we're looking at this, we're seeing a slowdown. So the car is driving down, okay? We know we're in a buyer's zone. Okay, the, the big boys are driving the car. Like imagine if this is one big green green push upwards. The big boys is driving upwards. In this time, some of the smaller players are like, ah man, let me try to sell this. Let me try to sell this. Okay, let me try to sell. So they hit the sell here, they get down to here. Not so far. They pull back. They get down to here, no lower low still. They pull back. They get down to here, new lower lows, and they pull back. Okay. They're getting somewhere. They get down to here, new lower lows, but then they when they pull back, it's like, wait, whatever happened to my lower low? That's fake. That's fake. This is the first sign that the buyers are coming. That's the first sign they're coming. It almost sounds like, you know, the the <laughs> like the second coming, you know, beware, it's, it's, it's here. So you, we're looking out for signs like this, like someone is back. Okay, once you say someone is back, then you start, you know, getting all your tools and all that stuff ready. You do your money management, you do your calculation for how much your pip is going to be worth. You do all of that stuff and you're like, let's do this. Let's gear up to hit the buy. Because the big boy is still driving the car and my sellers as much as they try unfortunately they don't got the money or the balls to do it they did it before and they're doing it again okay now here's the next question if you were to do the buy if you were to do the buy okay patience everybody i'm going to explain the next stage to you if you were to do the buy right here is the big boy gonna carry you through and saying, boom. Why not? Why won't he carry you through? Doesn't always the big boy win? A spike maybe, okay. Shake you out, it's too early, better price, we still in buyers. Okay, I haven't seen an answer yet. I'm gonna give it to you guys right now. Ready? Look, when the first time we said, the buyer stopped here. The markets never really made a higher high. What if this is a sign for us to see the buyer is struggling at this price? Which means if you're in this buy, prepare to get out. If the buyer is scared of that price, then why should we hit the buys and be, we're not scared of this. Does that make sense? 
So it's very critical to, to, to pay attention to these levels as they're being created or not being created, if you want to put it. Okay, so let's take a look at some uh, some other pairs on this. Let's do some more examples on trend lines now. Now that you got a little bit of uh, core understanding of, uh, let me open up. So some of you guys said pound New Zealand. Let's take a look at this one. Take a screenshot here. Okay. Now, if I draw my trend line like this, Okay, everyone see my trend line I just drew? Am I gonna survive that spike if I did a trade based on the trend line? No, I'm not gonna survive that spike. The only person who's gonna survive that spike is a person who hits the sell and has no stop loss. <laughs> that's the only person, but he's not gonna survive trading in general. But that's the only person who's gonna survive that spike. Okay, so this spike is way too aggressive to survive from. Now, why does why does the stop uh, sorry stop why does a spike happen so high? If the flow is downwards, how can the spike come up so high? Okay, now comes the psychological part. Okay, psychological part. Okay, news. Yes, all that stuff is true, but notice prices when they started to fly up here. Okay at this true support equals resistance when prices finally broke here they finally broke it no matter how much it looks like it's a downtrend you're still in buyer's territory you're still in the big boy's car coming at you okay do you see that you have to be aware of this thing if you're going to go counter trend be prepared to take some whipsaws Okay, so now let's understand this. Well, how would I have drawn my trend line then? Is the trend line, Naveen, that you drew earlier, is that even correct? Well, what if I draw the bodies? Is that correct? Well, what if I draw this tail to that tail? You know, what if I just pick and choose whatever looks good to me? No, we can't do it like that. It doesn't work like that because the market's not going to pick and choose and give you money. Okay. Yeah, very good. For those of you who guys are saying faker, horizontal, take a look at this. Once the price reached blazing high right here after breaking all this nonsense, he reached blazing high speeds, reached up to here maximum, pulled back a bit. We're like, huh, I'm not sure if that's a support equals resistance, but it does look like it pulled back at least 30%. Okay, okay, something is here, but then he breaks it again like, ah, it's nothing. But he comes right back down like, Okay, this just increased my attention to this spot. Like, whoa, what is that? You know, it's like, huh? So it, it, it you know, it, it should make you, it should grab your attention. Like, what just happened? That moment where it grabs your attention, you're saying, okay, well, let's see what's happening. It's still in buyer's mode. Buyer's trying, trying, trying again. Again, the same situation. Once again. Keep moving it forward. Another faker. Would you say now this price is very, very important to the big boys? How many attempts did the big boy try before he said, you know what, screw this? He's tried a couple times. He gave it a shot. He did whatever he could. Followed by a collapse coming into the market. Does that make sense? Okay, so can I draw a trend line there on the top areas where I was drawing it before? Or is a trend line incorrect situation? Yeah, it's not the right situation. Okay, it's not the right situation. So whenever you, you look at situations like this, you're like, ah, it's not supposed to be a trend line. It's supposed to be resistance. But if it's a resistance, well, then how do I know when I can sell? Because even if I sell it from resistance, doesn't that mean I'm going to get spiked out or stopped out? Yes, it's because it's not that you're trying to sell from resistance. It's the understanding of you're selling while this guy is still trying to hit the buys. 
And if that's going to be the case, I hope you have more money than he does. Okay? Otherwise, that trade is going to be into a loss. You can only participate in the trade once you see signs that I think my big boy is giving up. I think my big boy is giving up. Does that make sense? Okay. So, let's take a look at some signs of the big boy is giving up. Okay, in this phase, when the markets were trying to buy, here we go, we got a buyer coming in, reaches this highest point, fails, reaches the next highest point, okay, sorry, this highest point, the next highest point, which fails. Can you tell me how it went up? Okay, so what, before we go into that, sorry, let me, let me take you through one more process, one more process. Now that I've taught you guys how to draw the lines, right? You guys, you guys all with me on how to draw the lines, you know, whether you have to go through the candles or not. Everyone understand that concept? Yeah. So now that we we know how to draw the line, let's not lose focus of what the market is trying to say, because that's what happens in technical markets, right? Okay, well, I draw the line so it's all sells, or I draw the line so it's all buys. Um, it's a pullback and support resistance, so it's a buy. No, let's not lose focus on what they're trying to tell us. We have the line. Let's take it step at a time. First move up. Right here, number one. First move up. Stops at this level. Second move up. How strong is the second move up? How strong does it go up? Very fast. How strong does it come down? fast they're fighting they're fighting at this price okay third move up how fast does the buyers try to take it up to the next highest highest point slowly very slowly does it even make a higher high from his previous one okay he doesn't even make a higher high how fast does he come down he comes down very fast and he even takes out this guy now all these signs are attributes of i think my big boy is starting to get scared of something here or he's pulling out his money hence why the sellers have more space to come in i don't sell here i don't sell here i'm gonna watch as he fades away this phase is the area where we do all of our action. Okay, any trading activity needs to be made in this area. Now, yet, if you enter somewhere in here or here or here or here, the general concept is, well, put your stop loss just higher, just above the recent high. Well, then that's a stop out. Well, okay, above this recent high, well, that's a stop out above this recent high well maybe that's a stop out well my broker is going to stop me out anyways well then how are we ever going to survive based on knowing this knowledge of uh, or information who knows the answer who knows the answer to this okay so here, here's the understanding to this. Okay, stage number one, you take it in pieces, very slow pieces. You know it's the buyer's market, but you know the buyer's scared. You know that situation like, okay, I know it's his market because we're above his support equals resistance, but at the same time, he's freaking out. He's freaking out, right? So we're like, okay, he's gonna die, but he's still maintaining grounds every step of the way, maintaining, maintaining, maintaining. It's right at this maintaining ground sequence where he first does a spike up, then he makes a lower low spike down, followed by next bar is showing you cannot go any higher. Now you're getting your information closer. What does a spike up generally do? It stops out people, stop loss hit. It makes people hit the buys because that before it became a spike, it's a green bar, isn't it? Until the candle does not close, it's a green bar first. So if it's a green bar, everyone's like, oh my God, my trend line just broke. 
What happens when my trend line breaks? What am I supposed to do? I have to hit the buy. I was trained. Let's let's put all our money onto this. Let's hit the buy. Once they hit the buy without knowing the story, knowing the situation, the big boy's like, perfect. The more people can buy, I can hit the sell. That means more orders coming into the market. Everything comes in stages. Everything comes in stages. So I know that we went a little bit beyond the topic today because the topic today was trend lines. But we have to understand that it's not just drawing a simple line on your chart that's going to make you money. It's never going to be like that. So if anyone tells you I'm going to make you a rich millionaire or billionaire based on some techniques I'm going to teach you about support equals resistance, you tell them, you know, I'm not coming to you, man. I'm sorry. Like I understand you're coming from the right direction or something, but I'm not coming to you because I know it doesn't work. Yeah. There is a lot more to it. Trading is is a, a intelligent game. Now, because it's an intelligent game, all the jargon used in trading is very difficult, right? If you go to any uh, uh, major corporation or anything like that, they, they use all these words. And, you know, you see a, you know, 80% fib pullback and into the trend line and the false breakouts and this. By the time you're, end, you know, you're done listening to the entire sentence, you're like, Oh my God, I need a coffee. I don't know what he just said. It doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be like that. That's why we're, that's why we're here at Urban Forest. We're trying to teach you things in a different way. Okay. How many of you guys actually like the price action course? Do you guys really get every, how many, actually, let me ask you this. What, what week are you guys in on the price action? Okay. Week three, week five complete. Okay. So we got a graduate there finished another graduate. Finish another. Okay, we got some graduates in here too. Good, good, good. Excellent, excellent. Okay. All right, good, good. So, those of you who do not have it, I would say get onto the Mastering Price Action course. It is the only course on the internet that's going to help you. We initially priced it very, very high because we only wanted to teach the elite members how to do stuff like this. But then, you know, that went against our philosophy of we're trying to be the best education in the in in the Internet when it comes to trading. So we're, we that's why we released uh, the Mastering Price Action course and we priced it at one ninety seven. So it is available for everyone to get it. Um, and in fact, uh, I think our mo is not in. Let me get you guys the links. Da, da, da. Sorry. Uh, there we go. There's the link for you guys there. Uh, I can open up the page for some of you guys if you guys want to see it. Uh, the elite membership is not available for everyone to, to take. Elite membership is only available if you've done the Mastering Price Section course. Okay? So because the elite, co elite community is very, very expensive, we recommend you go through the Mastering Price Section course. Start to make some money first before you can get there. Because it is very expensive. And let's face it, it's it's... It's going to be very confusing if you just come in there without knowing. So it's a seven week course. I challenge all the students who, are, who haven't taken it, take it. And I think in seven weeks, I can turn you profitable. I'm pretty much the fastest mentor who can turn students profitable on the internet. And I put my name on it. That's why we gave a 30, back, 30 day money back guarantee as well. Okay. Um, anything on YouTube is not it's not in the Mastering Price Section course. It's completely unique. You'll see little clips here and there, like, like uh, little hints and stuff. For example, like I'm teaching you guys now on trend lines. You'll, so you'll see stuff like that in there, uh, but more in detail, more in detail, more examples and, and stuff like that. Okay, so for those of you who don't have it, like I said, get it. Uh, we're only gonna keep it valid for so long. Uh, the real reason why I've released that course is I also need traders uh, elite community is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and I actually need traders for my prop firm uh, so I'm not gonna hire anyone that I do not know who hasn't trained by me directly so uh, I need to train them on my own so get the course see how it is for you start the money rolling uh, and I will see you guys in the next webinar which we're having in two weeks we do this every two weeks we have a webinar uh, make sure you register for all the webinars whenever we send out to you the emails. And for those of you who came today, thank you for coming. 
It is always a pleasure to see you guys. And if there's any questions or concerns, you guys can email me at naveen at urbanforex.com. Thanks a lot, guys. And cheers. Have a good day for now. Take care. Bye.